Paleontology Paleontology is the study of the history of life on Earth as based on fossils. Fossils are the remains of plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, and single-celled living things that have been replaced by rock material or impressions of organisms preserved in rock. Dinosaur Science Series 1 Paleontology and Fossils Paleontologists use fossil remains to understand different aspects of extinct and living organisms. Individual fossils may contain information about an organism's life and environment. Much like the rings of a tree, for example, each ring on the surface of an oyster shell denotes one year of its life. Studying oyster fossils can help paleontologists discover how long the oyster lived and in what conditions. If the climate was favorable for the oyster, the oyster probably grew more quickly and the rings would be thicker. If the oyster struggled for survival, the rings would be thinner. Thinner rings would indicate an environment not favorable to organisms like the oyster too warm or too cold for the oyster, for example, or lacking nutrients necessary for them to grow. Some fossils show how an organism lived. Amber, for instance, is hardened, fossilized tree resin. At times, the sticky resin has dripped down a tree trunk, trapping air bubbles, as well as small insects and some organisms as large as frogs and lizards. Paleontologists study amber, called fossil resin, to observe these complete specimens. Amber can preserve tissue as delicate as dragonfly wings. Some ants were trapped in amber while eating leaves, allowing scientists to know exactly what they ate and how they ate it. Even the air bubbles trapped in amber are valuable to paleontologists. By analyzing the chemistry of the air, scientists can tell if there was a volcanic eruption or other atmospheric changes nearby. The behavior of organisms can also be deduced from fossil evidence. Paleontologists suggest that hadrosaurs, duck-billed dinosaurs, lived in large herds, for instance. They made this hypothesis after observing evidence of social behavior, including a single site with approximately 10,000 skeletons. Fossils can also provide evidence of the evolutionary history of organisms. Paleontologists infer that whales evolved from land-dwelling animals, for instance. Fossils of extinct animals closely related to whales have front limbs like paddles, similar to front legs. They even have tiny back limbs. Although the front limbs of these fossil animals are in some ways similar to legs, in other ways they also show strong similarities to the fins of modern whales. Father of Paleontology Jean Leopold Nicolas Frederick, Baron Cuvier, French, Kidge, August 23, 1769 to May 13, 1832, known as George Cuvier, was a French naturalist and zoologist, sometimes referred to as the founding father of paleontology. Cuvier was a major figure in natural sciences research in the early 19th century, and was instrumental in establishing the fields of comparative anatomy and paleontology through his work in comparing living animals with fossils. Cuvier's work is considered the foundation of vertebrate paleontology, and he expanded Linnean taxonomy by grouping classes into phyla and incorporating both fossils and living species into the classification. Cuvier is also known for establishing extinction as a fact at the time. Extinction was considered by many of Cuvier's contemporaries to be merely controversial speculation. In his essay on the theory of the Earth, 1813, Cuvier proposed that now extinct species had been wiped out by periodic catastrophic flooding events. In this way, Cuvier became the most influential proponent of catastrophism in geology in the early 19th century. His study of the strata of the Paris Basin with Alexander Brongniart established the basic principles of biostratigraphy. Among his other accomplishments, Cuvier established that elephant-like bones found in the USA belonged to an extinct animal he later would name as a mastodon, and that a large skeleton dug up in Paraguay was of Megatherium, a giant, prehistoric ground sloth. He named the pterosaur Pterodactylus, described, but did not discover or name, the aquatic reptile Mosasaurus and was one of the first people to suggest the Earth had been dominated by reptiles, rather than mammals, in prehistoric times. Cuvier is also remembered for strongly opposing theories of evolution, which at the time, before Darwin's theory, were mainly proposed by Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck and Geoffrey St. Hilaire. Cuvier believed there was no evidence for evolution, but rather evidence for cyclical creations and destructions of life forms by global extinction events such as deluges. In 1830, Cuvier and Geoffrey engaged in a famous debate, which is said to exemplify the two major deviations in biological thinking at the time, whether animal structure was due to function or evolutionary morphology. Cuvier supported function and rejected Lamarck's thinking. 
Cuvier also conducted racial studies which provided part of the foundation for scientific racism and published work on the supposed differences between racial groups' physical properties and mental abilities. Cuvier subjected Sarah Bartman to examinations alongside other French naturalists during a period in which she was held captive in a state of neglect. Cuvier examined Bartman shortly before her death and conducted an autopsy following her death that disparagingly compared her physical features to those of monkeys. Cuvier's most famous work is Le Regni Animal, 1817, English, The Animal Kingdom. In 1819, he was created a peer for life in honor of his scientific contributions. Thereafter, he was known as Baron Cuvier. He died in Paris during an epidemic of cholera. Some of Cuvier's most influential followers were Louis Agassiz on the continent and in the United States, and Richard Owen in Britain. His name is one of the 72 names inscribed on the Eiffel Tower. Fossils. A fossil is any preserved remains, impression, or trace of any once living thing from a past geological age. Examples include bones, shells, exoskeletons, stone imprints of animals or microbes, objects preserved in amber, hair, petrified wood, oil, coal, and DNA remnants. The totality of fossils is known as the fossil record. Paleontology is the study of fossils, their age, method of formation, and evolutionary significance. Specimens are usually considered to be fossils if they are over 10,000 years old. The oldest fossils are around 3.48 billion years old to 4.1 billion years old. The observation in the 19th century that certain fossils were associated with certain rock strata led to the recognition of a geological timescale and the relative ages of different fossils. The development of radiometric dating techniques in the early 20th century allowed scientists to quantitatively measure the absolute ages of rocks and the fossils they host. There are many processes that lead to fossilization, including permineralization, casts and molds, orthogenic mineralization, replacement and recrystallization, depression, carbonization, and bioemuration. Fossils vary in size from one micrometer bacteria to dinosaurs and trees, many meters long and weighing many tons. A fossil normally preserves only a portion of the deceased organism, usually that portion that was partially mineralized during life, such as the bones and teeth of vertebrates, or the chitinous or calcareous exoskeletons of invertebrates. Fossils may also consist of the marks left behind by the organism while it was alive, such as animal tracks or feces, coprolites. These types of fossil are called trace fossils or ichnofossils, as opposed to body fossils. Some fossils are biochemical and are called chemofossils or biosignatures. Fossilization Fossilization is the process by which a plant or animal becomes a fossil. This process is extremely rare and only a small fraction of the plants and animals that have lived in the past 600 million years are preserved as fossils. This may be surprising considering the millions of fossils that have been collected over the years and the many billions still in the rocks. Those plants and animals that do become fossils generally undergo, with some exceptions, several key steps. Process of fossilization. First, the soft tissue that exists during life decays leaving behind only the hard parts, bone, shell, teeth. Second, hard parts may be transported and broken. This causes the fossilized remains to be incomplete representations of the living animal. It is much more common to find a fragment of shell or bone than it is to find a complete skeleton. Third and most important, hard tissues become buried and altered. In most cases this involves destroying the original material from which the hard parts were made as minerals are slowly dissolved and replaced by new ones. Often a hard part is dissolved without being replaced by new material, leaving behind only an impression or mold of the original animal. If this mold is filled with sediment that is later cemented into rock it will make a cast of the original animal. These fossilization scenarios are a few of many possible processes that turn living organisms into rock-like material. Each process generally follows the three previously mentioned steps, decay, transport, and burial. Think of using the same procedure to bake two cakes and using a different set of ingredients for each cake. In our case, the cakes are fossils and fossilization is the procedure. Fossil Types 1. Body Fossils the first type, body fossils, are the fossilized remains of an animal or plant, bones, shells, and leaves. These can be mold and cast fossils, like most of the fossilized dinosaur skeletons and big bones we see, replacement fossils, like petrified wood, or whole body fossils, mammoths caught in the ice, or sex trapped in amber. A mold is an imprint left by the shell on the rock that surrounded it. There are two types of molds. They are external mold. It is a mold of the outside of the shell. 
Each time we break a shell or bone out of the rock, an external mold is left behind. Internal molds. Internal molds. Molds of the underside of the shell may be left on the surface of rock that formed when sand or mud filled the inside of the shell. 2. Molecular fossils. Molecular fossils are often referred to as biomarkers or biosignatures and represent products of cellular biosynthesis that are incorporated into sediments and eventually into a rock. Many of these chemicals become altered in known ways and can be stable for billions of years. 3. Trace fossils. Trace fossils are marks left by an animal or plant that has made an impression. These fossils include nests, burrows, footprints, or any other markings of the animal's time on the earth. The structure of the animal or plant remains as a mineral form. The colors of the minerals that replace the form can be dazzling. Sometimes they are made into art and jewelry. 4. Carbon fossils. All living things contain an element i.e. carbon. When an organism dies and is buried in sediment, the materials that make the organism break down and eventually only the carbon remains. The thin layer of carbon left behind can show an organism's delicate parts like leaves or plant example, fern fossil 300 million years old. 5. Pseudofossil. Sometimes watery solutions of various minerals speed through the sediments and it takes the shape of some plant part or animal. Their study shows that they are neither plants nor animals. Such fossils are called pseudofossils. Fossil folklore. Throughout history it has been obvious that fossils are not only normal pieces of rock. Some clearly look like bones, teeth or shells, but why were they made of stone? People came up with many different explanations. Most of these were fantastic, but a few were surprisingly close to the truth. The ancient Chinese, for example, thought that dinosaur fossils were bones of dragons. 1. Devil's Toenails Although they look genuinely like modern seashells, People like to think of these fossils as the ugly toenails of devils. They are fossilized Jurassic oysters, called Graphia arquata. 2. Thunderbolts These belemnites are the fossilized internal shells of animals related to cuttlefish. But they look more like bullets and were once seen as thunderbolts from heaven. 3. Snake stone You can see why someone might think this was a coiled snake turned to stone, and in fact the end of the coil has been carved to look like a head. It is an ammonite, a type of seashell. 4. Magic Stone In Northern Europe, fossil sea urchins were known as thunderstones. People thought they fell during thunderstorms and kept them as magic charms against being struck by lightning. Bone Wars The Bone Wars, also known as the Great Dinosaur Rush, was a period of intense and ruthlessly competitive fossil hunting and discovery during the Gilded Age of American history, marked by a heated rivalry between Edward Drinker Cope, of the Academy of Natural Sciences of Philadelphia, and Othniel Charles Marsh, of the Peabody Museum of Natural History at Yale. Each of the two paleontologists used underhanded methods to try to outdo the other in the field, resorting to bribery, theft, and the destruction of bones. Each scientist also sought to ruin his rival's reputation and cut off his funding, using attacks in scientific publications. Their search for fossils led them west to rich bone beds in Colorado, Nebraska, and Wyoming. From 1877 to 1892, both paleontologists used their wealth and influence to finance their own expedition to procure services and dinosaur bones from fossil hunters. By the end of the Bone Wars, both men had exhausted their funds in the pursuit of paleontological supremacy. Cope and Marsh were financially and socially ruined by their attempts to outcompete and disgrace each other but they made important contributions to science in the field of paleontology and provided substantial material for further work both scientists left behind many unopened boxes of fossils after their deaths. The efforts of the two men led to more than 136 new species of dinosaurs being discovered and described. The products of the bone wars resulted in an increase in knowledge of prehistoric life and sparked the public's interest in dinosaurs, leading to continued fossil excavation in North America in the decades to follow. Many historical books and fictional adaptations have been published about this period of intense fossil hunting activity. Rarest Dinosaur Fossil Ever Auctioned A fossilized Tyrannosaurus rex, nicknamed Stan, sold at auction for $31.85 million, becoming the most expensive dinosaur fossil ever sold. The 67-million-year-old specimen, one of the most famous T. rex fossils, because of its good condition, crushed its original sale estimate of $6 million to $8 million. The anonymous buyer at Tuesday's auction conducted by Christie's was a telephone bidder. The sale showed broad interest among rich collectors of dinosaur bones and reflected a strong market for rare trophy works despite the global coronavirus pandemic. Stan is one of only about 50 T. 
Rex fossils ever discovered, with most displayed in museums. It has been on display for years at the Black Hills Institute of Geological Research in Hill City, South Dakota. It is one of the most complete T. Rex fossils ever found, with 188 bones, its head in pristine condition, and over 11-inch long teeth. It has often been used as the model for T. Rex figurines and depictions. The fossil that sold Tuesday was found in 1987 by amateur paleontologist Stan Sacreson, hence the fossil's name, in the Hell Creek Formation, part of an area known as the Cretaceous Badlands. Initially, the bones were misidentified as a more common triceratops. But in 1992, paleontologists from the Institute recognized it as a T. rex. It took more than 30,000 hours to carefully excavate, and it was later installed and displayed at the Institute. Paleontologists say Stan would have weighed 7 to 8 tons at his peak and showed signs of a difficult and violent life. He suffered a broken neck, with two of his vertebrae bonding together and a third immobilized. He also had a puncture in his skull and ribs. This shows that, nothing is impossible, even the most unlikeliest of things. And even something as simple as a rock could have once been an, living, breathing creature. And maybe one day, we will find the most amazing discovery of them all. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. And next time, we will be exploring about the possibilities that, cultural and mythical creatures, could have existed and how they were inspired to be created. This is PBN, see you next time. Hi everyone, thanks for watching the first episode of PBN Dinosaur Science. Stay subscribed to get notified when a new episode is uploaded. Most likely the second episode will release next month. Thanks for watching and see you next time.